In three, two, one, take a bite. Go! What's in my Girl. Balance. Girl. I tell you, you know, because I'm the only one that knows gender. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think you'll be a girl. Guess who that you are? Next week is going to be a girl. Yeah, I call you princess because I feel like your mama is looking pinky. <laughs> Sweetheart, I'm your aunt. I'm, I'm expecting that you're going to be a girl. And this is Auntie Vivian. Um, I'm guessing Mona's baby is going to be a girl. I'm guessing that Mona's baby is going to be a girl. I will be your favorite uncle. I want you to be a girl. Be a girl for me, okay? Can't wait to hug you. We can't wait to give you kisses. Hey guys, hey loves, hey besties, welcome back to my channel. Make sure to subscribe. On my channel, I talk about my motherhood journey, I talk about my lifestyle, tech tutorials, tips and tricks, just everything, everything. It's been a while I came on here and I have to apologize to you guys, I'm sorry. Um, there's been a lot of changes, there's been a lot of updates that you guys have been missing on and I'm here to just give you a summary of what has been happening with me. First things first, recently just gave birth and I think that's more reason why I've been away for a while here. So in today's video, I will just be talking about my birth story, my birth plan and how that got failed or how that got messed up. Um, the story, I might not be good at storytelling but just stay with me, okay? Stay with me. My first pregnancy, I went like MIA off. This time I wanted to film every process, which I did but they didn't make it here because of some technical issues. I'm um, juggling being a new mom for the second time and having a toddler in the house is a lot. I'm going to film a whole total different video for that. I dive into my third story. Who is ready to hear the gist? Because it's a lot of gist, but less than two weeks I had my baby. So I'm still healing, I'm still healing. I'm still adjusting, but thank God I've been able to, I'm able to, you know, sit down here and make this video. I don't know when I'll be dropping this video, but you know, at least I made the attempt to film it, right? When it's still fresh, I see they hot. So my first pregnancy, I gave her to a CS, a season section, and my reasons, it wasn't an elective CS, it wasn't my decision, because I actually wanted to give it maybe vaginally, but oh, my baby is about to cry. So during my first pregnancy, I had a complication where I didn't plan, I think the whole thing with CS starts with the first. With my first baby, the best with CS was because I did a pervimentary scan around 37 weeks and the doctor, um, this x-ray, a pervimentary x-ray around 37 weeks and it says my pelvis was too so small for the size of my baby at that time. Now the doctor in charge of me, which was the doctor in charge of the internet out here, said I could still go ahead and have my, you know, wait till I fall into labor or get induced and let's see what the body does at that point, which made sense to me because I was like, okay, fine, let's just see how it works at that moment. So I waited till 40 weeks. I didn't fall into labor naturally. So I got induced and the induction did not go as planned, you know, during my first pregnancy, it didn't go as planned and it didn't progress. I was not dilating and then I had to just agree to go into you know the theater that day i had my cs when they brought up my baby my baby had cords wrapped around his head so i was even more lucky it was a miracle because i just had that instinct to go in for the cs i'm happy i made that decision right so they fast forward to for 30, around 13 to 15 months after my first baby i took in again and this time I was open to any option. In my head, I knew this would be a CS. Point. So I went back to the same hospital I gave birth where I also met the doctor. But this time, I reached out to my genital pretty late, seven months-ish. And when I got the doctor, I was surprised to even hear from him that I could try VBAC, which was a vaginal birth, you know. And I was excited. Because, but also, I should try cut down what I eat so that I don't have a big baby that would require them having to do a CS, which is mostly the case. 
or would mostly be my case because my first baby had a very big weight you know he was very he had a lot of weight so he came out weighing 4.2 kg so this time he was like if we try having a baby with lesser weight then maybe we can escape having a you know cs so i was very you know um serious about what i ate throughout my pregnancy i did not crave anything weird if i had to have a wet craving i tried to curtail it anyway so i saw what till 38 weeks i went back for a scan I found that my baby was not in the um, head down position she was transverse and i mean at that moment there was the transverse position there was also the um the fact that my baby was weighing 3.8 kg which was not bad if it was my first pregnancy or in other situation like what my doctor explained to me but um, the major um, challenge he had was my height in my baby weight and also um, the position which is the most important thing she didn't turn as she should so I came back home I did some exercises I did some walking that could naturally make her turn but then nothing happened around 39 weeks when I went back for checkup my doctor had to book for a surgery and said even if I fall into labor right now I will still have to go through a CS if he doesn't turn into the right position so at that point I just decided I made up my mind that it was going to be a CS surgery so I was like okay you know what let's just do some stretches exercises things that would help me heal faster because my first CS was I won't say it was a breeze but I healed faster I healed fast I got my strength back fast the in 12 hours after my surgery I was able to take a few walks around 40 weeks I went to the hospital for CS elective CS and you know I got there on Thursday evening around like 10 p.m. you know I got in there first thing I did was they gave me they inserted the cannula on both hands. At this point, everybody knew it was an elective CS, so there was no point in, of induction or anything, no long story. I'd um, told my family, my friends, everybody knew I was going in for a surgery. So in my head, since it was an elective CS, I was thinking, oh, on Thursday, because Thursday is the, day, is the day the hospital would normally have their surgery. So I'm like, since I was booked a week earlier, then I should be one of the first person they should attend to. But so that I can easily um, pass the 12 hours check, which my hospital policy is that after the surgery for the next 12 hours, you're supposed to lay back, lay on your back, rest and sleep. Then after 12 hours, you may be, you be asked to take a walk around the premises. So, and then no water, no food, nothing. So then I go to the hospital on Wednesday evening. Let me correct myself. On Wednesday evening, I go to the hospital 10 p.m. ish. I'd had dinner maybe 7 p.m. around 7 p.m. in the house. So when I got to the hospital, I took water, took a few light drinks, and that was it. So the next morning, I was waiting for them to wheel me to the theater, only for them to start having lots of emergency, emergencies, emergencies, emergencies. To my greatest surprise, my surgery that I thought would be done in the morning was done like 2 p.m., which was not bad, but I didn't eat till that time, and I knew my I, in my head i'm like okay if i have my surgery like eight it means like 8 p.m i can have something even if it's lipped in something sha so the fact that it pushed my surgery to two it meant that the whole day i wasn't going to eat anything so i was already like bra like my i it wasn't the food for me it was the water because i was like a, a well i took water my first pregnancy i took water this one i didn't take water as much as i did with my first till like eight months nine months ish that's when the water thing started. I started craving for water and everything. But with my first from day one, water was my friend. So um, back to the surgery. And at that point, I walked in. I was strong. Compared to my first, I was almost passed out. I was tired. So I was just locked down to wound. I was tired and drained and dehydrated with my first. This time, I was more calm. I was more observant and you know, I walked in I was aware of what was happening until I got in the surgery room and they bombarded me with so many drugs plenty plenty things that I did not know 
will take my energy away. But I know when I was real out on the I was tired, I was drained, I was drowsy, I was I'm like, where's all my energy? Why did I you know I was I was supposed to in my head I was thinking Oh, since I had the energy, I was not used before the surgery. After the surgery, I'll be strong. I can do things. You know, I can at least look up and see who is standing beside me or, you know, look at my family and friends or people outside the surgery room, my friends outside the surgery room. This time when I was weird, I was weak. I was trying, forcing my eyes to stay open to just look at, you know, my friends outside or my husband and all. But it was not happening. I had to sleep. So everybody left me, which is part of the policy. They made sure my baby was fine. My husband made sure my baby was fine, gave them everything they needed in the nursery, and he left for the night. I stayed alone in the hospital. I was sleeping. I didn't taste anything for like more than a hours, which happened with my first. So it's not a new thing. When they came in in the morning, I got cleaned up. This time, I'm going to tell, I'm not going to lie to you. CS is painful. With my first, I would have been like, it's painful but manageable. This time, I could not stand up. I was crying. Like, I could not say. I didn't know what pain was until now. Like, stop. It's time to stop, okay? No more. With my first baby, I was learning what pain was. This time, I went through pain that... When they with me as on theater at first, I was crying crying like my eyes were filled with of tears like crying but that was that was that was the prep up you know my first baby after the surgery was when i felt the most in fact the pain i felt was when the anesthesia weared off and this was like midnight i was in pain the next day i was in pain but everything just went it was bearable this time the next year I went off, that one, the pain was bearable. But you see, when I was asked to stand up, you see, when I had to stand up, I did not understand. You know, I cannot explain what the pain felt like. But I will tell you that if you're going to go in for a CS, prepare yourself. The first might be easy, but you see, the second is another level of pain. It's maybe it's just me. It might, it might just be me. It might just be my body. Because people told me. The worst, like the the more CS you have, the more painful it becomes. So I prepared that myself that oh, you know, to be more painful. But I did not see this kind of pain coming. It came like a, a slap on my face. It came like it I still have chills. I was in so much pain that the, the only thing the hospital were doing to me was they were giving me lots of you know injections, pain relief. The other one, I was just sleeping, waking up, sleep, wake, sleep. The next morning, on Friday morning, I think around 11 a.m., private room where I had my baby with me, you know. And then at this point, I was trying to bond with her, you know, carry her breastfeed. Well, the minute I was trying to breastfeed, my tummy was contracting. My incision area was pulling me. I could not sit on my own because for me to stand up, somebody has to hold me to stand up. For me to sit down, somebody had to hold me to sit down. For me to lie down, I must drop a tear, like I must cry. This happened a few days. It wasn't like it happened like a whole week. For a whole week, five days, I was in pain. I'm not going to lie. Right now, I, the pain I feel right now is bearable, but the pain I felt then, I could not understand it. I felt it was a plaster that was pulling me. I removed the plaster from the incision area. By myself, I pulled it off. But it was not the plaster. I felt it was something that was. It was just my. I was messed up mentally. Like I was just like, what, what, what? <laughs> I said, see. But the good thing is, at the end of the day, I have my baby here. She's fine. She's alive. I'm alive. I'm fine. But I'm just creating. I'm not scaring you. My body is different from yours. The minute I go home. On my way home, I didn't even know that I was supposed to even be careful about the road I ply. Like, you know, my husband driving me home was another painful experience because we had to go enter like bad road, bad bump and all that. And I was not prepared. That triggered another crazy pain that I was in tears when I walked into my house. Like I was teary. I was weeping. My whole clothes was drenched in tears. 
when I came into my house after I had my baby. I went back to the hospital on Wednesday for cleaning or dressing the wound. I told him to take out the whole plaster. They took it out. I was healed outwardly. And I also complained about the pain. So he gave me some painkillers that worked like magic. When I go home, I took the painkiller. This is the summary of my best story. It's a seasonal session, but I went through hell. <sighs> chills. I'm having chills. But guys, if your mom watching me and you're going to have a surgery anytime soon, I'm not here to scare you. You might be lucky to not feel shit. You might be lucky to not feel anything. But it's expected to feel pain. Um, the minute I started feeling fine, I was able to start... Um, I think today made it um, two weeks, or tomorrow make it two weeks I gave birth. And today was the first time I had my bath since I went in for a surgery. So there are many things I'll talk about, postpartum, you know, healing, recovery process. If you are first time mom that had that would go through a CS or have gone through a CS, this might be helpful to you. I will drop that video here. The only significant change was compare my birth story from my sons and my daughters. If I was to compare both of them, I would say I would prefer. Uh, there's no prefer. Pain is pain. This time the pain was 2.0. Headache. The thing I suffered most with my first um, CS surgery was headache. I had headache, and I think that was a result of um, the anesthesia injection. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it well, but the injection. I don't know what happened, but for some reason I had headache, which was part of the um, side effect of that um, anesthesia. So. This time, I think I, I also preferred the anesthesia person, or I don't know what they are called, more than the previous one. The previous one, like I said, I was not aware of what was happening because I was tired, dehydrated, weak, and confused at that point because I was being induced, so I was in labor, but it wasn't active, but I was in labor. So I went through pain, I was contracting, I was in all those things, so I was drained. When I was giving my, um, I was giving to the injection, she didn't prep me at all. She did not prep me at all. If I was to compare the person who prepped me now and then, I felt like that person did not do her job. I don't know if it's a thing with Nigerian hospitals, but I don't know why they don't allow people filming in some good, in some hospitals in Nigeria. My hospital too, did not let me film. At first, they didn't allow me so filming. But this time I was lucky. I asked and I was allowed to take a picture of my baby while having the skin to skin. I wish I had that for my baby boy, Star, my first son. My first child. Also, when I was being briefed by the anesthesia lady or the, uh, the person in charge of giving the anesthesia, she was asking if I wanted a full anesthesia or the um, one, the partial one, which is a half. Yeah. She didn't ask for the one I wanted. She just wanted to know if I wanted to be awake or asleep. For me personally, I would want to be awake to see what you are doing because I'm not about to sleep through life. If you're, some, if you're watching me right now, let me know if you've had a surgery and what you choose. Did you choose to stay awake or you choose to be asleep? Let me know your reasons as well. Drop it down in the comment section. If you just had a baby by CS, how was the experience? If this is your first or second or third or fourth CS, how was your experience? Let me know down in the comment section. Let's just let's talk, let's mingle as moms. As a mom to be or if you know you're married, don't leave yourself, don't be left out. Let us know your opinion between the maternal bed and a cesarean section. They're all normal delivery. But different um it's done differently. So they're all normal delivery. One is done vaginally, the other one is done back in you know, surgery and let's share your just share your ideas share your thoughts of everything hope you enjoyed watching this video if you did then sure to hit the subscribe button share this video like this video i appreciate the nice gesture thank you for watching see you guys in my next video bye